Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan. Last video, I have explained you about the basic rules and exemptions of Income Tax Act. In this video, I'm going to explain you about the classification of incomes, how incomes are classified, how taxes are applied on different types of incomes. So this video is very, very important. In the coming problems, if you have not watched this video, then every problem will be a difficult problem for you. So give more concentration on these problems. And even in examination, they may ask you the concepts like what is casual income? What is special income like that? So before starting, before going ahead, take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board, then I'll explain every point in detail. Now, classification of incomes. So, incomes are classified into two types. Incomes exempted from tax and taxable income. In the coming one video, I'll give you what are the incomes which are completely exempted from tax. Now, we concentrate only on taxable incomes. Now, the taxable, the taxable incomes are classified again into three categories. The incomes which are taxable can be conveniently classified into three categories. The first one casual income, second one is special income and third one is normal income. One by one I am going to explain you first casual income. This concept is very important many times in examination theory is asked what do you mean by casual income? What is the tax rate on casual income? So if an income is earned due to an element of chance, unexpected income, non-recurring income. So if an income is received with an element of chance, elements, element of chance and luck, non-recurring, unexpected income, that is called casual income. Such income is called casual income. Now examples. What are the examples of casual income? The first important uh, example of uh, casual income is winning from lottery. A person has purchased the lottery tickets. One of the lottery tickets he won. So he will receive the lottery prize. So winning from lottery prize is the best example of casual income. Secondly, horse races. Income from horse races. Then crossword puzzles, card games or ga gambling or betting or winning from TV programs or lucky dips conducted by business establishments etc are the examples of casual incomes. All these things you have to write in examination. First of all, the meaning of casual income, any income which is earned with an element of chance, non-recurring, unexpected income is called uh, casual income. Example, uh, winning from lottery, horse races, any types of other races or card games, crossword puzzles or any kind of other games TV programs or winning from lucky dip conducted by business establishments, gambling, betting, etc. All these are the examples of casual income. Now these incomes are taxed at a flat rate of 30%. These casual incomes are not clubbed with any other income. It should be kept separate because there is a flat rate of tax on casual income. 30% is the flat rate of tax. On which again, if surcharge is there, it will be added and uh, health and education cess will be added to that. For example, if a person has won a lottery price of 1 lakh, so 30% of 1 lakh, 30,000 rupees he has to pay the tax. So finally he will be left only 70,000. So even after winning 1 lakh rupees lottery, he will get only 70,000 after deducting tax. Apart from tax, Health and education says 4% will be there. If surcharge is there, that will also be added. That is the procedure. Now, for casual incomes, no basic exemption is given. <clears throat> basic exemption is allowed for special incomes and normal incomes. But basic exemption limit is not allowed for casual income. Even if a person won a small amount of 100 rupees, on that 100 rupees also tax will be calculated. For casual income, no tax rebate is allowed. Tax rebate will be allowed for lower income groups. In the coming video, I, may, I will explain you about tax rebate. For lower income groups, some concession is given in the form of tax rebate. But tax rebate is not allowed for casual incomes. That's all. 
So this is the brief explanation of casual income. Now I am coming to the second one, very important, that is special incomes. Special incomes are taxed at concessional rate or lower rate of tax. Those tax on which the tax rate is lower or concessional rate. These incomes are taxed at a flat rate. Like here also casual incomes is taxed at a flat rate of 30%. Special incomes are also taxed at a flat rate. While calculating the tax, the SSC is allowed the basic exemption limit. Remember, no basic exemption limit is allowed for casual income, but basic exemption limit is allowed for special incomes. These incomes are example of these special incomes. Short term capital gain, now from now onwards we call it as STCG, short term capital gain on transfer of securities. Securities means shares, bonds, etc. If the securities are transferred, then gain arising is short term capital gain on transfer of equity shares. This is an example of special income. Long term capital gain on other assets. Short term capital gain on transfer of securities. Long term capital gain on transfer of any other asset. These two are the examples which are called special incomes. Now, Profit on sale of any asset is an income. If an asset is sold, asset means any property which is purchased for using, not for selling, but later on it is sold. Example, a person has purchased the house, not for selling purpose, but for giving them on rent. Later on, he sold the house. It's a capital asset. The income arising is a taxable income. According to Income Tax Act, land or building or both, jewelry made of gold or silver, shares, etc. So examples they have given what is capital asset, land or building or both, jewelry or shares, etc. are treated as capital asset and profit on sale of capital asset is called capital gain. If a gain arises on sale of capital asset, it is called capital gain. On the date of transfer or sale, if the asset is held by the SSC for more than three years, then it is termed as long-term capital asset and the gain arising is long-term capital gain. So how we can say an asset is a long-term capital asset or a short-term capital asset? Income Tax Act says before selling the asset, if the SSC has held that asset for more than three years, then sold, it is called long-term capital asset. Example, a person has purchased the gold five years back. So for five years, he was holding the gold. Now during the current previous year, he sold that gold. Then the gain rising is a long term capital gain because more than three years. Similarly, if a person has sold the house property, he has purchased the house property 10 years back. Then any gain arising on that uh, selling of house property is a long term capital gain because he hold the property for more than three years. In case of shares and equity oriented units of mutual fund, the period of holding is one year. Some exceptions are given. In case of shares and equity oriented units of mutual fund, in mutual fund different units are there. One of the unit is equity oriented unit. If a person sells the shares after one year or if a person sells the unit equity uh, units of equity oriented funds of mutual fund. In that case, the period of holding is one year. After one year, if it is sold, long term. Before one year, if it is sold, it is short term in case of shares. Now, in case of land and building or both, the period of holding is two years. For land, building or both, the period of holding is two years. Before two years, if it is sold, it is a short term capital gain. After two years, if it is sold, it is a long term capital gain. For shares, the holding period is one year. For any other asset other than shares and land and building, the period of holding is three years, right? Otherwise, the asset is considered a short term capital gain. That means if the asset is sold below three years or in case of shares, the, if the shares are sold below one year or in case of land and building and other uh, land and building or both, if it is sold below two years, within two years of purchase, it is called short term capital asset and the gain arising will be short term capital gain. Now, LTCG on other asset is taxed at a flat rate of 20%. Remember, long term capital gain on transfer of other assets, 
will be at a flat rate of 20%. You have to remember all these tax rates. For casual income, the tax rate is 30%. For long-term capital gain, LTCG on other assets, it is flat rate of 20%. This income is not clubbed with any other incomes, that is normal income. Actually, we have to separate it. While computing the tax liability, we have to segregate how much is the casual income, keep it separate and 30% tax. How much is the special income, that is LTCG, tax on LTCG, keep it separate. Don't mix up with normal income. Then note, the LTCG on shares, one exception is given. The long-term capital gain on shares that is equity shares and units of equity oriented mutual fund. If security transaction tax is paid, then 10% on gain in excess of 1 lakh without indexation. One special provision is given by Income Tax Act. If the SSC sold the shares long term, if you got a long term capital gain on sale of shares or equity, units of equity oriented funds of mutual fund, then in that case, if the gain is up to 1 lakh, no tax. If the gain is more than 1 lakh, then 10% of gain will be taxed, flat rate, 10% without indexation. What is indexation? I will explain you while dealing with capital gain. This provision you have to That's all. So, so far I have explained you about casual income and special income. Lastly, normal income. So an income which cannot be treated as casual income and special income is considered as normal income. Very easy. You have to check. If it is not a casual income, if it is not a special income, then definitely it will be called a normal income. So for normal income, basic exemption limit is allowed. First condition. No basic exemption is allowed for casual income. Basic exemption is allowed for special income. And basic exemption is allowed for normal income. The aggregate of all heads of income is taxed on slab basis. The person may have different sources of income. Income from salary, income from house property, profits and gains of business or profession, other sources. He has different types of other incomes. All the sources of income will be aggregated together. The total normal income is taxed at slab basis, not flat rates. Here it is a flat rate 30%, casual income flat rate 30% and uh, special income tax with a flat rate of 20%. But in normal income, slab system will be applied. The different slabs will have different rates. <coughs> now, the tax rate applicable to an SSC whose status is individual for the assessment year 22-23 is as follows. Now we are focusing on our current assessment year 22-23. So, if the residential status of the individual is resident and he is an individual, then the tax rates applicable for the current year is as follows. In case of resident, non-senior citizen, who is a non-senior citizen? A person who is below 60 years of age is called non-senior citizen. For non-senior citizen, what are the slabs? First, 2,50,000 tax rate nil. Concentrate here because these provisions we have to apply in the problems, coming problems. If you do not remember these rates, then problem will be difficult for you. Now, first 2,50,000 nil, no tax rate. From 2,50,000 1 to 5 lakh, 5% 5 is the tax rate. That means more than 2,50,000 but up to 5 lakh. So whatever income you have, on that income 5% is the rate of tax. If the income is more than 5 lakh, that is 5 lakh 1, up to 10 lakh, up to 10 lakh, for this income, the tax rate is 20%. And over 5 lakh, that means 5 lakh 1 and above, the tax rate is 30%. So 4 rates you have to apply. 0%, 5%, 20%, 30%. 0% up to 2 lakh 50,000. 5% from 2 lakh 50,000, 1 to 5 lakh. Then 20% 5 lakh 1 to 10 lakh, 30% 10 lakh 1 and above. That's all. This is for non-senior. Now senior citizen. Senior citizen means a person who has crossed the age of 60 years but below 80 years. That means more than 60 years, 60 and above, sorry, 60 years and above 
but below 80 years he is called no, senior citizen for senior citizen the first slab is first 3 lakh nil here it is 2 lakh 50 thousand here it is 3 lakh so first 3 lakh rupees nil no tax second slab from 3 lakh 1 to 5 lakh up to 5 lakh the tax rate is 5 percent from 5 lakh 1 to 10 lakhs the tax rate is 20 percent from 10 lakh 1 and above 30 percent the same rates of tax 0 percent uh, 5 percent 20 percent 30 percent for both but the difference is here the basic exemption limit is 2 lakh 50 thousand and here it is 3 lakh that's all lastly super senior citizen who is super senior citizen a person who is 80 years and above 80 plus if a person then he is called super senior citizen in case of super senior citizen the tax rates are first 5 lakh first up to 5 lakh rupees nil no tax for super senior citizen second slab from 5 lakh 1 to 10 lakh it is 20 percent then 10 lakh 1 and above it is 30 percent so only three slab rates are applied for super senior citizen that is 0 percent 20 percent 30 percent in between 5 percent we don't have no 5 percent these are the slab rates to be applied for super senior citizen lastly tax liability the tax liability means income tax that means the basic income tax we calculate to the basic income tax surcharge if it is applicable surcharge is not applicable for every individual if the total income exceeds 5 crore during the previous year then only surcharge will apply below 50 lakh no surcharge then plus health and education says it's mandatory every problem we have to calculate health and education says at the end of 4 percent so basic income tax plus surcharge plus health and education says will give you tax liability now how much is tax due or refund sometimes it will be tax due and sometimes there is tax refund that means income tax department will return back the money to the SSC. So how to calculate tax due or refund? The take the tax liability just now we have calculated. Whatever tax liability is there from that deduct two items. TDS and advance tax. Deduct the tax deducted at source and deduct the advance tax. Will get the tax due or refund. If you are getting positive figure that is tax due. If you are getting negative figure it is tax refund from the income tax department that's all so this video i have explained you about the classification of incomes as casual income special income and normal income remember these provisions are very very important don't underestimate watch this video not once twice thrice then only you can be able to remember all the provisions and these provisions we are going to apply in the coming problems and very frequently in examination they will ask you about casual income special income like that ha, so inshallah we'll continue our discussion on this introduction in the next video so if you are satisfied give a like to the video share my channel subscribe if you have not yet subscribed and buy the super thanks which is below which is given below my video and inshallah we'll continue in the next video